Sitaram Jai Shri Krishna. It's now exactly 8 p.m. on today, Friday, the 10th of December, where we meet again to have an hour of what we call um, communion with each other on this beautiful topic of living with mantras. We have come from a background or from a dharma where there are thousands and thousands of mantras and we tend to get lost in chanting these many mantras but without any focus as to the reason and to the power of the mantra that we are being engaged in. And it's like all other areas of life, unless we understand what we are doing, unless we are 100% focused on what we are doing, then the result will not be very beneficial to you. Or in fact, they might not be a beneficial result because the system of chanting um, that you're using does not give the result. All of us are familiar with what we call the Pareto's law. And this law on a material basis says that 80% of the benefit comes from 20% of the work that you do. So therefore it's critical so focus, you know, direct your prayers, direct your mantra to that which would give you the maximum result. So if we were to start to live with mantras, then mantra is in essence, is what we call the spoken word. In its very, very deep meaning and its deep philosophy, every word that we utter or every word that comes from the tips of our tongue is a mantra. And therefore the spoken word is extremely powerful. You can create the life that you want by focusing on the quality of your spoken word. There is nothing more soul destroying um, than be the recipient of what we call unkind words. We are hoping that no devotee present on the screen today will be guilty of offering what we call unkind prayers. Because prayers can be positive as well as negative. So in living this daily life, it is up to you to develop the attitude or the habit of let every word that you speak become a prayer. Why is this so? And where does it say so in our Shastras? There is a beautiful mantra that goes like this, devotees. It says, Om Bhadram Karnebi Shunayama Deva. Bhadram Pashye Makshabir Yajatraha Stairangai Tushtu Vagum Shashtanobihi Vyashema Devahitam Yadayahu Vyashema Devahitam Yadayahu. So, which means we must take a definite decision that every word that we speak is Vyashema Devahitam Yadayahu is very pleasing to the gods. And 
in other words a word that is pleasing to the gods become a mantra so this is why living with mantra is living with a consciousness that as you speak so you will be because we look to prayers to satisfy and to solve all of the problems of our life and you will ask the question but you know i've been praying all the days of my life but yet my problems get bigger and bigger my own happiness gets bigger and bigger and yet i think that i've been praying there are many reasons sometimes why the prayers does not match the intended result and this comes down wherever there is a lack of synchrony between the mind the body and the soul or the atma so if you're praying but your mind is devious your mind is very negative because the mind is related to the subconscious the subconscious the subconscious mind does not question if you tell him that you're hateful then you will receive hate if your subconscious mind is that you're a very corrupt person you could be the most what we call eloquent prayer in the world you could be the most greatest sanskrit scholar there is but if your mind and your thoughts are not benevolent then whatever you're praying will not get the result because the subconscious mind only listen right to the thoughts only listen to your mind so the subconscious things that carries out carries out your order as what you speak yeah we have to feed it with happiness we had to feed it with very very good vibrations so therefore let us start now with in our mantras so we will start for those of us who are joining us for the first time you're just going to go through the mantras um just chanting we're not going to do the meanings tonight but we're going to just so everyone has a flavor of where we are and what it takes before you start to pray so the whole idea we haven't started to pray as yet but we are preparing our body to pray we cannot approach that pure lord unless we have become pure and how do we become pure by addressing our mind and decorating our mind with very pure and noble thoughts so let us all chant the first mantra and this mantra is very beautiful is it's a universal mantra that we are not praying for myself oh lord you know give me something nice or give me something material no it's about say oh lord protect us both i'm praying that lord may you not suffer from any form of illness may you have riches and wealth may you have all forms of benevolence and kindness may may you may you be blessed with what we call knowledge may you be blessed with the ability to decipher what you're being taught may you be blessed with the intellect to use what has been taught by your teacher your guru or your boss or your mentor so let us chant om sahana bhavatu next line sahano bunaktu saha viryam karava vahe tejasvina vadhitamastu om shanti 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 we do the mantra one more time Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karavahe 
तेजस्विना वधी तमस्तु मा विद्विशा वाह and in this mantra you have you see some words they have an accent on top of them those words are double like in the first line om saha na vavatu in the second line there's the word all the words are clear and in the third line there's this word viryam if you say viryam it's not correct but om saha viryam so it's getting the pronunciation right because if we get the sanskrit right and the pronunciation with focus it it changes the whole body it changes the body at what we call at a molecular level so let us move on again as i said the purpose of this beautiful mantra is that we pray that all the capacities that every one of you on the screen today that everything your physical your psychological and your mental being be available to you in a manner that is con conductive or conducive to your pursuit of this knowledge so you pray with this mantra o oh lord free me from hate let me nourish my mind with good food of good thoughts so sahana sahana bhavatu sahano bunaktu bunaktu means feed or eat but not what we call physical food you want to feed your mind beautiful knowledge let's go to the next mantra which is this beautiful mantra after you have said that you really like your guru you're prepared to be a good student to do your homework and to wish everyone well you can then go to your guru mantra and in this mantra guru ra brahma guru ra vishnu guru devo maheshwaraha guru sakshat para brahma tasmai shri guruve namaha so as last week and the previous week we said the purpose of the guru and this is so important the mantra does not say anywhere that the guru is brahma and the guru is the creator and the guru is the destroyer of this universe all of us have those three elements but what we want is that someone who has made the journey of spiritual discovery and emancipation and have what we call experience moksha to teach us how we can do the same thing and it's up to you to close your eyes and have this desire for this moksha or living this life of spiritual bliss om guru de brahma guru de vishnu guru devo maheshwaraha guru sakshat para brahma tasmai shri guruve namaha and in the conclusion of this mantra it is very very important that we are able to really take all the opportunities and the blessings that life has given us but sometimes our ego is our worst enemy we put so much stumbling blocks on our advancement in life and therefore the prayers do not bear good fruit so what this mantra teaches us it says you never know when the guru will appear in front of you not necessarily you know the person with a beard and a saffron robe but the guru could come in a suit and a tie it could come in the form of a young child boy or a girl but if we are humble and we have an open and a peaceful demeanor then we will see each and every person that we have an interaction with as a source of benevolence to us and this is why you know we enrich ourselves every day by the sight of someone and the question you may ask is that correct they might you know this person is not very nice well the moment you are saying the person is not very nice you are allowing someone to dictate or to damage the purity of yourself you must be pure 
and your thoughts will be pure and let us not be judgmental as though he is such a bad person, she is such a bad person, you know, such a not a nice person. We must avoid and train ourselves to be benevolent internally in our mind. It doesn't matter what another person do because they are carrying their own karma. So here again, it's so beautiful that always be humble, always be benevolent. You know, it could be your mother, your father, your husband, your wife, your daughter. Each one of that could create this beautiful spiritual experience. In fact, you're having the guru in front of you all the time. But no, you want to go on a plane. Well, you can't go on a plane now. But you want to go on a plane. You want to go to somewhere in Kedarnath on the banks of the Ganges to see a guru not realizing that you have always had the guru or gurus in your own home or in the home in which you were born to. But what you did, you neglected. When Martha and Peter wanted to teach you, oh, what can they teach me? Not realizing they have got generations and generations of great karma and they are the greatest. Then we moved on to understanding this beautiful energy that we call Ganesh Bhagwan. And we defined, you know, you cannot pray to Ganesh Bhagwan unless you 100% know who Ganesh Bhagwan is. You know, how can you pray someone without knowing who they are? What is their nature? Where they came from? What can they do? You know, or what are their overall what we call power? Here, we made it quite clear that Ganesh Bhagwan is sometimes is the only Bhagwan that we ever need to approach. And therefore, we define Ganesh Bhagwan. The first thing, as we address the beautiful power of removal of all forms of difficulties from our being, we address him. Firstly, the first line of any mantra should be Om Namaste Ganapati. And this is such a profound mantra. You know, we all very, what we call uh, by rote, says, oh, namaste means I pray to the Supreme Lord that resides within you, that my Supreme Lord that resides within me, pray to the Supreme Lord that resides within you. And of course, it's, there's nothing greater than welcoming someone with a namaste and meaning it. But here we are offering Namaste to whom? Ganapati. You're saying, oh, Supreme Lord, the one that envelopes this whole universe, that one this whole universe sits within, who is the creator of the universe, who is the supreme principle that underlines this beautiful creation. Oh, Ganesh Bhagwan, oh, powerful energy. That same energy that resides within me as my life principle and you are identical. Oh Lord, give me the power and the inspiration so I can be what you call Mangalam. Because this is the whole idea of living a religious life. We want to live a religious life so we can see the benefit of what we call Anandam. We can see the benefit of receiving bliss. And this is why we pray. We pray so Ganesh Bhagwan, what we call energize the Atma inside of us, that is him. He adds power by thought and intent. So you now become like a small Ganesh Bhagwan. The analogy is that, you know, it's like the ocean is H2O, you know, made of the same um, chemical composition as a drop of water or a drop of tear that comes from your eyes. It's the same and it's identical, but we can't create a tsunami. We cannot create the wave. We cannot create a storm, but the big Bhagwan can do all of that. The big Bhagwan, Ganesh Bhagwan, in his omnipotent form, in his wonderful form that, you know, is bigger than the whole world, bigger than the whole universe. He has this power. And this four, we defined him. It says, Om, in the third line, Tomeva Kevalam Kartasi, O Ganesh Bhagwan, 
We offer our namaste to you and we recognize that we are a small creator and you are verily the creator of this whole world. You give everything. There is nothing that you want from us. There's nothing that we can give to you because you are already the giving. You know, it does not look, look nice. You know, we'll be getting um, a lot of presents for Christmas. But what would happen is that we would be recycling the presents. No, but that's not nice. Sometimes, you know, you give someone a present that they have given you and then it's embarrassing. So what we are saying to Ganesh Bhagwan, you know, he gives us everything, but what does he want in return? What he wants in return is defined in Bhagavad Gita. In Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna said very clearly, you are my devotee who sees me in all. So if we start to see everyone is having a beautiful demeanor as Ganesh Bhagwan, we will never be upset about anybody. We will never be annoyed about anybody. So therefore, this whole concept that living with mantra would lead to what we call permanent happiness is what this series is all about. For you to recognize that you are in every being and every being is inside of you. So the concept of what we call our dharma does not exist, but the concept of dharma living a life with an understanding. So it's not only about prayer, but also ridding yourself of impurities in order that the prayer can be fruitful. Um, as we use the term fruitful, you know, it's like if you have a car and it's a petrol car, but you, what we call uh, pour in paraffin, it will destroy the engine. And this, that is what um, bad thoughts or criticism, you know, constant criticism or constant gossiping about people does to your Atma. It destroys it and it makes your prayers not being very fruitful. So in order to get the blessings of Ganesh and to see that he is this creator of this world, the one that protects you, um, on every single breath that you breathe is that he and he requests us that we always be benevolent in what we do knowing that we know who ganesh bhagwan is we then did this beautiful prayers om you can recite it with me now om vakara tunda mahakaya surya koti sama prabha nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada. We chant it now. Om Vakratunda Mahakaya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarva Karyeshu Sarvada. And we said the benefit of chanting, not only this mantra, but any mantra. So therefore, just chant a mantra constantly every day. And what happens? You become the creator because you have the creator inside, inside of you. So rather become a consumer or a follower. Praying opens up the channel of creation and you'll be able to do things that you never thought that you will be able to do. If you have creation and you have anger, no, they cannot go together. But most important, when you're prayer, you become self-aware. I am praying to Ganesh Bhagwan. I'm so impressed with the beautiful flowers in my garden. I'm so impressed with this beautiful car that someone is driving. I am so impressed and delighted that the birds that are flying around me all of that is the creation. So we start to acknowledge in a positive way the benevolence and the beauty of Ganesh Bhagwan. In point four, he says, praying gives devotees what we call astuteness and knowledge. Sri Ganesh addresses the issues in his devotees' way 
and favors them with the capacity to make all forms of choices. So devotees, sometimes we do not have the time or the inclination to pray to any other Bhagwan other than Ganesh Bhagwan. And this is very important. He's called Pratam Pujiye Ganapati Bhagwan. So first, but maybe there is time run out. Okay, Panditji, you have to go now. But once you have done the prayers to Ganesh Bhagwan, you're well covered because we, those of you who joined us in the previous week, is, is at, if you look at the family tree of Ganesh Bhagwan, you don't have any issues in understanding. Just say, Om Namaste Ganapati. With this clasp hands and you pray obeisance to Ganesh Bhagwan, you get the blessings of Bhagwan Shiva and Mata Parvati. You get all of the riddhis and the siddhis, all of the success and all of the skills. You also be blessed with what we call shup and love, auspiciousness. You're also blessed with financial gain, material gain, um, as a result of your auspicious behavior. And then once you've been blessed with gain, very important that you do not lose your gain by being discontented. We must be satisfied with what we have. And then the children or the grandchildren following the lineage of Ganesh Bhagwan is what finally we get Anand and Pramod. Even if we only get Anand, but Anand and Pramod are sort of like a joint word, because if you, have, if you get Anand, it, in English it says blissful, but it's not the bliss of eating, let us say, a sweet fruit or eating a chocolate. That is temporary bliss that creates problems. This is what we call, you know, every day you are on cloud nine because your bliss, your bliss is on what we call the character of suk, which means joyful divinity or joyful divinely. And if anything is divine, it means it's eternal. Um, then we did the RT, so let's go down. Let's go now to where we did the last mantra we concluded last week. Let's just recite this mantra again for your blessings. Om Gajananam Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam. Again, Om Gajananam Bhuta Ganadi Sevitam Kapitta Jambu Palasaru Bhak. Shutam Uma Sutam Shoka Vinash Kayakam Namami Viganeshwara Pada Pankajam O Mahagana Pataye Namaha. So you're asking this question, right? If I am praying to the Supreme Lord, where does this shoka come from? Where does this unhappiness comes from? Well, it comes before you started to pray. So that was there. Or you're praying, but your praying is like Arjuna. He has Krishna in front of him, and yet he gets dejected and sad. And all of us are like Arjuna. We see the glories of the creator in front of us. And yet we become discontented. We become very greedy. We become very sad when we have no reason to be sad that we describe a circumstance instead of saying that what has arrived today has been sent by Bhagwan Sri Krishna, then that must be good. There must be some good because it has come from a source that is good. And you will, we will find that this works wonderfully every day in our life. It doesn't matter how what's the difficulties uh, may seem from a material point of view. Um, with the blessings of the Supreme Lord, everything is what we call transformed or what we call converted. Vishaka Pyala Rana Jina Bheja. Again, nice statement. Vishaka Pyala Rana Jina Bheja. Pivata Mira Hasire which means is that when you pray to the Supreme Lord, there will be many circumstances where people will feed you with poison. Maybe not in today's days, because in the olden days, if you didn't like someone, you would poison their food. But now what you do 
you poison people character by saying bad things about them behind their back but that is okay it's perfectly okay for someone to criticize and someone to do whatever they want behind our backs but as mira bhai teaches us with krishna murti in front of you and krishna you're holding on and krishna is inside of you every cell of your body then your goodness and your good thoughts to krishna make whatever poison they may want to give you powerless in fact the poison becomes amrit to you so that's this beautiful mantra is that this mantra being positivity so with our faith okay something is a letter has come through the post and it can be interpreted as bad news but we say hon and ganesh ganesh bhagwan has already removed the obstacle that this problem has now been announced to me so a problem has been announced to you but ganesh bhagwan has already paved the way has already smoothed the rough seas and this you will see that in your daily life the more and more you become divine the more and more you become prayerful even you will be surprised at your divinity and your greatness because this is what prayers is all about for you to acknowledge where you are today as a result of prayer and for you to have a plan in your head where you want to be in 10 years time or 5 years time and don't tell me open did you you know um should we not be living um just about this moment no we must be grateful for all the things we have but we must have a plan you know a business plan to say is that this prayer i'm praying because not because you want something but you can see your demeanor you can see your happiness way down the line you might be 60 years now in 20 years time you will be 80 if you're 50 you will be 70 you want to see the progression as time goes on how your life will evolve as a result of prayers point 4 it helps us to usher positivity in our minds before we begin the day these are the core beliefs of of the gis ganesha chant it is known to improve our energy level of the listener so we did the mantras but we will do it once more before we conclude the next session so now last week we just going to run through this mantra beautiful beautiful mantra again in in the sense that this is what prayers is all about prayers is all about praying for the life you want to bless others with this is a key element in prayers key element in puja key element in yajna key element in our divine worship so let us go and see the meaning of this beautiful mantra but let us chant it two times om sarvesham swasti bhavatu om sarvesham shanti bhavatu om sarvesham nam bhavatu om sarvesham mangalam bhavatu om shanti 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 devotees the mantra only had one om but what i've done you can just choose any one of these four lines as your mantra and you can chant it and recite it every day last week we discuss swasti and shanti now we can concentrate on the fourth line which is mangalam if we chant this mantra with the image or the link to the supreme divinity so you have this big what we call aura or you have this big surya bhagwan or this big energy pouring blessings to you to your little surya and then what you do 
you are sending out like a mirror the reflection of what you're being blessed with. So what I'm saying, you are a mirror. You are a reflection of that Supreme Lord. You are a reflection of the divinity. But, you know, there's a very nice song that goes like this. Toda man darpan kehlaye. Our mirror is covered with dust. Huh? We have hidden our auspiciousness and our divinity by greed and anger and hate and malicious behavior. So you that should have been shining is now blunt and dark. Nobody don't want to have a look at you because your face from as a result of your hate and anger is dark, not in color, but is dark as in look. So let us come back again to prayer. We want that when we are blessed with auspiciousness, remember, you've already got rid of, of your hate. Ma vidvisha wahai. Ma vidvisha wahai. We have got rid of all the things that are not good. The hate, the anger, the calm, crow, the lobe, the moke, the hankara, the matsadia. Every single thing that is not good for us, we have removed it. And therefore, we are now pure. We radiate an abundance of auspiciousness. So if we do the just the fourth line, Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. It is slow. Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. And remember the word is Sham, Sarve Sham, S H A M. Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. There may be impute thoughts going on in your mind. There may be you don't like someone. Someone has hurt you. You do not know how to, what we call, not forgive, but how to dis, uh, disconnect from them. If you constantly recite the first line, Om Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu, may there be an abundance of well-being for all. This is what the Sarve, Sarve means total, everybody in this whole, not only in the earth, but in the whole universe, may there be an abundance of well-being. You know, not a drop, but an abundance of well-being. And you know, when you have somebody well-being in your mind, you wish them that they may be, have the second mantra, Shanti. Then the third mantra, you wish that they be Putnam Bhavatu. You wish that they be have complete fulfillment of their goals and their aspirations. So, and then finally, when you have wished all of that, you're, you have become so pure. You have become an auspicious being. Can you imagine, you know, it's like we talk about auspicious stars, isn't it? Or this is an auspicious sign. So which means if you see an auspicious star or an auspicious sign, you know that it will bring, bring good fortune and good luck. So this is your prayer. Now, can you imagine... You're praying this for tens of thousands of people. And each one of them who is receiving the spoken word of you is without knowing blessing you. As you give, you shall get. As you speak, you shall be spoken to. You know, there is a story of this girl. She was always rude to her mama. Always rude to her mom. Um, and before, you know, the mom would be at the table and she would tell her mom, look, you're talking too much, not realizing the hurt that she was causing her mom. So she was going, she went that day for a job interview and she was having a lunch with her potential boss. And of course, um, she was trying to impress the boss by talking. And of course, the boss returned it. 
you are talking too much. So which means karma can sometime pay back very quickly. As you give, so you shall receive. So let us live with prayers. Let us always give prayers as part of our life. Let us re recite this mantra again. Om Sarvesham Asti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shanti Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Om Shanti 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 O Lord, may there be an abundance of well-being an abundance of peace, an abundance of fulfillment, and an abundance of auspiciousness. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So which means again, this mantra blesses us with one final thing, is that if we have contentment and we have peace, automatically we will not shout at anyone, look, hurry up, hurry up, but you will have beautiful, beautiful face, patience. Now we come to the new mantra of today, and this mantra is, is very beautiful. And it, it follows the it follows the previous mantra. One second, one moment. Yeah. This mantra is one that every one of, of you should learn. You know, many times you will be invited, let us say, to a dinner table. And you will be asked to say the grace for the meal. And God say, 99% of our, what we call Sanatanis or followers of this Dharma couldn't say a prayer to save their life. So what we want in this series is that at least you must learn four mantras that you recite and become part of your life. And you, because these mantras are so universal, you can quote them on every occasion of your life. One second, so bear me one. Thing. So this mantra, as again, is Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Chantu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashit Dukabhak Bhave. So one moment, if I make this bigger, okay. And it follows out from the beautiful mantra that we did, and I hope you haven't forgotten it. So let's let's recap very quickly. Om Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu, Sarvesham Shanti Bhavatu, Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu. And you know, if you want a mnemonic to it, it's SSPM, Swasti, Shanti, Purnam, Mangalam. And just remember, if you only remember two of those prayers, Om Sarvesham Shanti Bhavatu, you can just get away with this one. I pray that each and every one of you have peace in your life. And in the last one, you can remember Mangalam, 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 Mangalam. Om Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu, let auspiciousness come to your life. So this next mantra follows, very beautiful. And it starts with the word Sukhinaha, or Sukhi means happiness. You know, in our prayers, and this is what we call, these are universal Shanti mantras. They're not, let us say, prayers um, for any particular creed or religion but they are universal. They do not address a specific deity, but they address the spiritual entity that resides within that living entity. So it's not judging. I just want everybody to be blissful. I am not leaving out anybody except so-and-so. <laughs> so this mantra has no exception, you know? Even if you were one day, you know, you're, you're, you drank too much for Christmas. And instead of, you know, uh, saying any other thing, this is what will come out of your mouth. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha. And you will say, Vishambhai, I'm drunk today, but, you know, I wish that everybody be blissful. No? And this is so wonderful. 
ओम सर्वे भवंतु सुखिनः सर्वे शु निरामय सर्वे भद्रा पश्यु मा कशि दुख भावे ओम सर्वे भवंतु सुखिनः सर्वे सचु निरामय सर्वे भद्रा पश्यु मा कशि दुख भाग भवे सो इफ वी कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन द की वर्ड्स इज दिस वन सॉरी दिस वर्ड इज हैपीनेस दिस वर्ड इज निरामय free from all forms of illness the third there are two words that we concentrate on on the third line which is bhadrani and pashyantu sarve bhadrani pashyantu pashyek or pashyantu means that we see but it's not physical sight that this mantra refers to but may my mind or may my intuitive sight automatically interpreted what is seen by this physical eyes to be divinely good so which means we would never you know have hatred for anyone it doesn't matter what the other person is doing you must always be sarve bhadrani pashyantu there would be people in your life who are not good to you and you would say look how good i have been to that person look how good i have been to that family they are having a wedding but they are not inviting me to the wedding oh how sad i am so we get personal in relation to our relationship with people and we cause so much of on happiness because we fail in our thoughts of blissfulness to all so let us say typically now you've been upset or offended by someone om sarve bhavantu sukhina oh lord whatever the circumstances that i am not being asked to participate in that relationship with them but i wish them well knowing that although they think that they have omitted you they are not the bhagwan it is the supreme power that has directed them to say do not call george to this wedding today or do not call george to that birthday party tomorrow they are not god so they everyone works under the direction of the superior supreme mind and this is the essence of prayer there is only one god that supreme lord did not want you be in a particular place so if you are praying and you are living with mantra om sarve bhavantu sukhinah mantra one everything is going to be happy why you are going to be happy if someone come and gossip something to you then the first thing we do not want to hear that the second thing is take a deep breath in and go to your prayer i am full of bliss and happiness can you imagine if a cup is full of what we call pure water and then what happened you seal that cup let us say with cling film so you seal that cup that nothing can permeate that cup even if you put a drop of ink on top of the cellophane or the outside of the cup or on the body of the cup it will not interfere with the purity of the water inside you have to look at yourself as being a container your container is full of pure thoughts and pure water you must seal it wrap yourself by virtue of the power of the supreme wrapper the supreme wrapper is bhagwan ganesh he closes you he give you nice garment that is what we call dirt proof no bad thoughts can permeate 
if Ganesh Bhagwan is present. So the second mantra, which is very important, especially in today's age. Sarve Santu Niramaya. Sarve Santu Niramaya. We do not want to dwell on this one because that is covered by the first mantra that if we wish for all beings to be blissful, it means that we wish them to be free from illness. But our rishis were very, very intelligent. They are not thinking about physical ailments and diseases here. They are specifically thinking about what we call the psychological illness. They said, look, you know, may all beings never have any hatred, any animosity, any false ego. Sarve Badrani Pashyan too, again, let our intuition be benevolent. And most important, Ma Kashit Dukabhat Bhave. O Supreme Lord, may no one cause or undergo suffering. So this is two words. No one cause or no one undergoes, which means you make sure that if you're going to be a prayer person and you're going to be a religious person, I would not conceive that you would be the cause of anybody suffering. By the same token, you may be having some suffering, but that suffering is only going to be there until you have redeemed yourself by the purity of Ganesh Bhagwan or of that Supreme Lord. So let us recite this mantra again. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha. Next line. Om Sarve Santu Niramayaha. Third line. Om Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu. Next line. Om Makashit Dukabhak Bhabe. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha. Sarve Santu Niramayaha. Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu. Makashe Dukabhak Bhabe. Why it is a good asset to have this mantra, a good possession. It's better than any jewelry or any watch you may own or anything you may own, because one, this mantra has a, what we call a pure source. It actually comes from the Krishna Yajur Veda, and it comes from and, and that part which is the Taitariya Upanishad, Upanishads being an adjunct to the Vedas, and it also what we call also come from the we had Aranyaka Upanishad, and that this Shanti mantra has the power to tap into the universal healing forces and cleanse out the mind as well as the body of poison. This mantra also takes the mind of selfish thoughts and guides you to be more compassionate. All of us needs to rid of ourselves of all the problems of this world. Read over self that come today, come tonight, that we can live a life of happiness. As you said, at the basic level, all prayers goes like this. Oh God, give me something and I shall give you, give something to you. The Lord neither has likes nor dislikes. And even if you bargain with him, he maintains his equilibrium at all times. The whole creation belongs to him. Therefore, how can we give him his own thing? And this is a wonderful understanding of prayers. Prayers what like what we call the real prayers, which means is energizing your own self and purifying your mind so the mind is in synchrony with the soul. Happiness will only come, you know, when you're not talking lies. So you're telling someone something that you know to be untruth. So which means the speech or the body is not in synchrony with the mind and the soul that is always pure. So anandam or bliss or auspiciousness will only come when you know what you're saying is genuine, what you do is genuine, and what you do is pure. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina. It's a genuine, as you say, you really have to love someone 
um, to wish them well. You really have to love someone to ensure that you reduce and reduce and, and eliminate um, all forms of greed and jealousy. But most important, prayers is us. It's about us being seen to be a divine being. It raises your level of spiritualities. And we're saying that, you know, these mantras, it's a Sanskrit mantra. And in reciting them with your intention directed in the mind, it's focused on a desire. The sound of the mantra grounds it into the physical universe, rearranging the essential elements in such a way that allows for your desired result. And this is the power of mantra. So if we, we're going to stop here now in that mantras has the power to rearrange the essential elements of the universe. When we are told that prayers can move a mountain or can dam a river, a river this is what you can do. All of you have this power to become what you have always wanted to be, but you did not know that you can be. So let us pray, let us recite these mantras before we close. Om Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shanti Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahano Munaktu Sahaviryam Karvamahe Tejasvina Vadhita Mastu Ma Vidvishavahe Om Shanti 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 Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Devotees, I now stop sharing and I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this special evening. Namaste to everyone, everyone. Wonderful evening. How do you?